How's it going today, everybody, and welcome back to Shaner's Mechanic Life. Do you have a 2007 to 2018 GMC Terrain or Chevy Equinox? You're starting to have problems with your heating and air conditioning. You know, you get cold, you got hot, that works. The fan, that works low to high, you got adjustment there. But it seems like whatever mode you press, it changes on the dash and your display here but just doesn't seem to change at the vents you know it could be stuck on the floor could be stuck in a vent could be stuck up in defrost well unfortunately you might have a problem with your mode door actuator now your mode door changes what pathway that air takes, whether it's the dash, the vents, or the floor. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get at it and how to change it, and also what to look for in the process to make sure that is indeed your problem. Here we go. Now, on these particular models, easy way to remember is your blend door is what blends the temperature to hot and cold. When you look on your dash, it's on the right hand side. Your blend door actuator is on the right hand side of your HVAC unit. Now your mode door. It's on the, the left side of here, your instrument cluster or your dash. And that actuator is on the left side here. Now a lot of the things I'm showing you in this video about the actuators and what to check as you're going along is pretty much universal from vehicle to vehicle. Now there's uh, basic HVAC systems and there's very complex dual climate control, stuff like that. You know, in general, they all have the same parts, but uh, a lot of the, like the dual zone climate control, uh, they'll have, you know, a right actuator and a left actuator for the blend doors and mode and all that. So uh, before you go tearing into it, do some research on the internet. Find out uh, where's the actuator you're looking for. And when you're looking at it, let's say you don't have any heat and you're in the driver's seat, double check. You know, do you have heat on the passenger seat? You know, are your heater hoses hot, in and out, stuff like that. You know, before you go tearing into a dash and doing a big job like that, you want to make sure you're going in there for a good reason. Now, there's a few different symptoms of a failing uh, and blend door or mode door actuator. Uh, number one is you go to use your controls and it just doesn't seem to do anything. You know, you go to defrost like I had, it was stuck down on the floor or stuck in a vent, anything like that, or even your uh, hot and cold. Turn it hot, you're not getting any heat. Turn it cold, you're not getting any cold, it's stuck on hot, vice versa, stuff like that. And also uh, noises from behind the dash. As you go to change modes or temperature, stuff like that, if you hear like a groaning or a click, 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 click in the background, uh, that's another sign of the actuator failing. Because basically what these are, you have a little electric motor and inside you have basically it's just plastic gears you know and those uh, get old or brittle or the little electric motor failed which was my problem here and you know you can get something jammed in the teeth or any, any number of things can fail on the inside of these and of course you can also have uh, some electrical gremlins you know you can have problems behind the switch stuff like that or even in the wiring any any number of things or you know double check your fuses too before you go digging into stuff now unfortunately to get at your mode door actuator you're gonna have to go down underneath by your pedals up underneath the dash and inside your HVAC unit so the first thing you're gonna want to do is move the driver's side seat all the way back now, if it's your vehicle, that's one thing. But if you're working on someone else's, they might be very particular with where the seat is adjusted. You know, they might be taller or shorter than you, whatever. So what I usually do is mark the position of the seat compared to the door jam. Usually all I do, don't use a marker or anything, just a little bit of masking tape. So what I do, put a piece on the seat and put a piece on the door sill and that way. You know, it's going to be perfectly lined up when the job's done. So now you can go ahead, move it all the way back. You're going to need 
all the space possible here. Next, you want to disconnect your negative battery terminal. That'll get rid of the door ding. And also, any risk of shorting anything out while you're working underneath the dash. Just make sure you remember to write down the presets on your radio. Now you want to tuck your battery cable out of the way. Or, what I usually do, is when I change the battery, I keep some of these plastic caps. Just put that over your negative terminal. That way you know if the cable hits it, it's not going to short out. So now we can start undoing some panels in the interior. Now you're going to spend most of your time kneeling in and stretching in underneath the dash. So make sure you get yourself a comfy little mat to kneel on. So first we're going to want to remove this plastic cover underneath your steering column. To do that, it's just two 7mm bolts underneath your hood opener and on the other side here. Undo those and then pull the cover straight back. Make sure you take the screws out and put in the magnetic tray. That way you don't lose them because after all these screws are the same color as your carpet. And down a little bit and straight back. If you start yanking down too hard you're gonna bend or break these clips. Now you can undo your hood opener and get this cover out of the way. So to get that out you simply press down on the center tab and gently pull it out. There you go. Kind of tuck that out of the way and get this panel. I usually put it underneath the car. That way it doesn't get stepped on and it's out of your way. Okay, next, you want to take off this metal panel. That's just four 10 millimeter bolts. And same thing, put your bolts, magnetic tray, and put your panel underneath the vehicle or wherever your safe spot is. Just remember to pull them all out there before you go driving away. Now we can start looking at the inside. Okay next we're going to want to remove the plastic panel here. Again that's just a seven millimeter bolt and some push clips. Just push the tab and pull it down. So I got the bolt out and you just take this little clip push the tab in pull it down same thing here pull it down now you need to remove this little tab to remove the rest of this but you're gonna have to reach inside and undo that 10 millimeter nut and Wiggle it out of the way. Of course, after you remove the first, there's the second one in behind. Okay, we got this cover off, and we're slowly gaining access to our mode door actuator. You can see this module here. We're gonna have to get rid of that out of the way, and you can see the colored wires there: the yellow, green, gray, white, brown. That red little tab, that's our electrical connector and our mode door actuator is what it's hooked up to. That's what we're after. So keep on taking some bolts out, making some more room. So next, you wanna get on the back side of this module. There's two bolts, 10 millimeters. Undo those and gently wiggle it forward and it'll come out of a clip at the back. And you're gonna make sure you don't damage any of the wiring break any of the clips, stuff like that. So these two connectors next, what you want to do is push in a little tab at the bottom and gently wiggle and pull them straight down. So once you got that down, these connectors are the same. Press the tab in, gently pull them out. And same as this one. You can get this out of your way now too. Now once you've done it once or twice, 
you can actually reach up in behind here and get at your actuator. Like you can see right up here. But just for uh, visibility of the video, I'm going to go ahead and pull this plate out. And as you can see, we got one bolt here, but don't uh, don't be fooled. That nut's welded on. So you're gonna have to undo the bolt from the backside and bring it out. And we got another bolt right here. And one right up at the back by the firewall there. You can see the brake light switch, the white thing here, in behind that. But you should be able to reach that from going up the back side of that steel plate. I'm sorry, it's hard to focus underneath the dashboard. <laughs> but yeah, if you just reach in behind this plate, you should be able to get up at the last bolt. So I ended up getting that back bolt and just use my extended reach inside a ratchet. It's got a nice little profile socket on it. And got it out. Now you can just jiggle and wiggle and wrestle this plate out of the way. And then now we should have clear access to our actuator. But the good news is, before I got carried away, just kind of let that plate drop down a little bit. And that is our actuator. You can see the kind of grayish plastic. There's the three seven millimeter bolts. Those are the ones we want to take out after we undo our connector. And we can get that out of the road and then check our linkage. So this little red tab, what you want to do is pull it straight back. That's what locks our connector. And up the back side, there's a little plastic tab. Push it in and pull your connector straight back. So what works best is to take the plastic clip right out and you can push that tab all the way down and she's undone. Now get your seven, mil seven millimeter socket, take these three bolts out and that actuator will pull straight out. Okay, just want to correct myself. It is not seven millimeter to undo those screws. It is in fact a quarter inch socket. Well, that's uh, that'll teach me for assuming what size they are. So yeah, get your quarter inch socket. Go ahead, take those three screws out. Okay, get your three screws out and pull it straight back because it sits on that spline and meshes in to the housing here. So now you can see where that actuator splines in there. Oops, drop my flashlight right there. Now what you want to do is put your actuator back in there. Just a little bit. Make sure you line up the splines. And we're going to check to make sure the doors in there are not seized. So just start it. Hard to see here. It's not pushed all the way in, and you just want to gently turn it. Now by putting that actuator part way in and then turning the door, what well basically what you're doing is you're making sure none of those doors are jammed, because you know, weirder things have happened. You can get stuff falling down to dash vents, make its way down, find up those doors, and cause you all sorts of grief. So now that we've uh, got that out, verified that our doors are moving freely we can go ahead and uh, put in our new actuator so here's our old actuator and here's our new one got this one directly from the dealer now in my opinion when you're buying parts like this now is not the time to look for the cheapest one you can because you know this this is actually an easy one to change in uh, the grand scheme of things so if you got one of these models where you got to pull half the dash apart last thing you want to do is have to go back in in the six months and do it again so get yourself uh, you know go to the dealer or a good name brand parts company and pick yourself up uh, a new actuator and just with any new part always make sure it looks right these ones look right on the top as well as the backside so let's go ahead and install our new one 
So now everything's basically the reverse of disassembly. Okay, our actuator's in, screws are tightened, connectors firmly seated in, and the red lock's pressed in. Now we can go ahead and bolt this bracket back up. Now once you get this bracket back up in place, which I would say is probably the worst part of the entire job, uh, I found what worked best was it, you get your first bolt started, get the second one up at the back, and then to get this lined up, this last one, I found I lifted it up, snugged up the two ones, uh, these two bolts to hold that in place and then get it from the back side, which is just a fight. And uh, saying a fight is probably an understatement, but uh, yeah, just keep on trying. Eventually you'll, you'll get that bolt in there. Next, you can take your Wi-Fi module slide that back up in behind the bracket and put your two bolts in there and there just be careful you don't pinch any cables just keep an eye out as you fish stuff through okay so once you get your wi-fi module tucked back up in there make sure you get all your wiring put on there beforehand and you can go ahead hook up the cables here Take one last look around, make sure you got everything hooked up, all your bolts in and tight, even look down at your magnet tray. Make sure you can allot for every one of those bolts and nuts. And if you got a magnetic flashlight, make sure you don't leave that in there. So now we can go ahead and start putting our covers on. Okay, you got a bottom cover on, and that back nut, don't tighten that all the way, because what that basically does is almost like an adjuster here. It'll set your distance for these so that way it uh, sits nice and high. Go ahead put our steel cover on. Once you get your steel cover on, get your outer panel, put your hood release back in like so and then lift it up and you want to kind of put it on straight because you want to get all these tabs lined up in the holes without breaking them. So the last thing you want to do is have this flopping around on you as you're driving down the road. Line up the top. Push your bottom in. And you can go ahead and put your screws in. Tighten those down. Don't want to go too tight. These little ones strip easy, especially when you use power tools. Now, we can go hook up our battery. Now we can pull our little cap off the negative terminal and hook up our battery again. Make sure it's pushed all the way down and snug down your battery cable. Now, we're not quite done yet. With a lot of these vehicles, there's a calibration procedure you can do on the HVAC systems. This one's actually a straightforward one. What you do, start your vehicle up. And you've got the automatic, press it to auto, and shut it off. Now you want to go down to your fuse panel, which one these? down here and my flashlight just died no big deal and you want to remove the HVAC fuses which on this one GM has been nice enough to uh, label everything for us here it is fuses 12 and 14 which are this one and the 5 amp 2 over. Now you want to leave them disconnected for 2 minutes. Okay, after 2 minutes, go ahead and put your fuses back in. Same slots you took them out of, obviously. Make sure they are firmly pressed all the way in. And then start your vehicle again. Turn your HVAC to auto. 
and just let the car run and do its thing for two minutes. Okay, and after two minutes, shut it off, and you want to let it sit for 15 to 20 seconds, and you can turn it on and test all your controls. Okay, 20 seconds. Fire back up. Let's get in the driver's seat and see how everything's working. Okay, first, let's try our front defrost. It's blowing good from there. Next, let's try our vents. Blowing out nice from there. And then, let's just go right down to the floor. I can definitely feel it down there. Everything seems to be working just right. Now you put your fuse panel cover back on. You can move your seat forward to line up to where the customer had it to begin with. You know, a job like I showed you today, generally uh, the shop's gonna probably charge you about an hour diagnostic time and uh, a job like this you're probably looking at uh, two to three hours labor on top of that so uh, at dealer prices or even an outside shop price it's going to be a fair chunk of change so i hope you have found this video helpful entertaining informative i definitely hope it helps someone save a trip to the dealer or another shop and save a bunch of money by a job that you know most of you with basic hand tools and a little bit of mechanical knowledge you can do this yourself so have a good night Thanks for watching and stay cool out there everybody.